My name is George Haley, and this is a little synopsis of uh, how I got arrested in Korea. Uh, I was uh, downtown Seoul and on my way to the school, and at a stoplight, as we uh, took off, on the right side of me, there was a Mercedes Benz, and he just took off very quickly and pulled in in front of me and bumped me into the traffic on the left side, and causing a little traffic uh, damage there. And the policeman came over and asked, well, what was going on here? And I said, well, this Mercedes Benz ran into me and bumped me into the traffic on the left side. And uh, so that, that's what happened. It's not my fault. And he said, well, where's the Mercedes? I said, well, he's gone. He's a rich guy. He's, he's gone. Well, that means you get the ticket then. Oh, my, that's not my fault. Well, anyway, he wrote the ticket. And about a week later, I got this letter in the mail with a ticket. And uh, it said that I needed to go downtown to City Hall to the judge and pay the fine. And I was, uh, needless to say, not very happy about it. But I went down there and uh, told the judge uh, my situation. And he said, well, I can only go by what the policeman wrote on the ticket. I don't know anything about all of that. He said, you either have to pay this fine. I don't remember exactly how much it was. But anyway, you have to either pay this or you have to go to jail. I said, well, OK, I have to go to jail then because I'm not going to pay it. It wasn't my fault. And he said, you really think that? Yep, yep, I'm not going to pay it. OK, so he called the man with a <laughs> blue uniform and a cap on. And this policeman took me down some stairs. And we went uh, through a tunnel underneath the parking lot there at the city hall and came up on the other side. And there was uh, this room that had the horizontal bars there, or the vertical bars, I should say. And uh, there were several guys in that room. And the policeman said to me, um, you know, I really hate to put you in there. Those are not really nice guys in that room. I said, well, eh, that's too bad. But I, it wasn't my fault. I'm not going to pay it. I was being really stubborn. And uh, he said, well, you should really think about it. Don't you think you can get the money? Nope, can't do it. And so he started to reach in his pocket to get his keys out. And I could see that he was very serious about what he was uh, saying. I really don't want to put you in there, but, you know, and he started to reach for the door. And about that time, I had a change of heart. Uh, I could see that he was very serious and that I was going to end up in that cell with those guys. And I don't know how long I'd be in there, a few days. And I didn't, didn't think that would be very good. So I said, well, maybe I could borrow the money from somebody. He said, OK, uh, how long would that take? Oh, I says, maybe a couple hours. Well, that'll be fine, he said. Yeah, OK, you do that. Uh, you meet me back here in two hours? Oh, yeah, yeah, I can do that. So he let me off. And uh, I uh, went home and got the money and breathed a sigh of relief that I didn't have to uh, go in that jail. Then I had another uh, incident that was, uh, well, something that happens when you're uh, in a foreign country and uh, you, you learn things the hard way. Uh, at the college, we had an area that we wanted to clear off so we could use for a garden. It was a pretty good sized little spot. And I had asked the uh, US Army engineers to come down with a bulldozer and clear the trees off and clear this area out. Well, the problem was that the area where the college was was called a green belt. You're not supposed to cut any trees, not supposed to change any of the topography. You're supposed to leave it all natural. Uh, green belt is just what they mean, green belt. And uh, anyway, I had these guys, and he was clearing the trees off. And after I was out there a little bit, I saw these two men in uh, blue suits. And they were talking to some of the other Korean uh, workers there. And they were all pointing at me and saying, Haley, Haley, he's in charge. Haley's in charge. So these two gentlemen came over and talked to me. And they said, uh, what, are, what are you doing this? Why are you taking these trees down? Well, we needed to clear this out. No, you can't do that. This is Greenbelt. You have to stop. 
So I had to go over and tell the uh, GI, uh, USGI uh, to stop. We couldn't do this anymore. I said he'd have to go back to the compound, to his army base, because he couldn't do it. And then these men, they wanted me to go with them to the main office, which uh, actually meant the jail. And uh, so I got in their car and went with them. And as I was going with them, I could hear them talking in front in, in, in Korean. And they were saying uh, something about uh, two or three days or four or five days or something like that. In other words, I got the impression they were going to keep me over there for several days. Uh, providing free room and board. And um, I didn't like that idea very much at all. So when we got to, the, uh, to their office, I uh, asked them, I said, can I uh, make a phone call? And they said, yeah, you can make a call. Well, the previous several months, I had gotten very well acquainted with the commercial attaché at the U.S. Embassy. And he was a good friend. We'd gotten to be really good friends. And so I called Mr. Lee and I explained the situation that these Greenbelt uh, officers came over and they were going to provide uh, free room and board for me for a few days. And I really wasn't looking forward to that and wondered if he could help me. So he said, well, yeah, I'll put my translator on the other extension and I'll let me talk to him. So I'll give the phone to them. And uh, he talked to him for a while, and then they gave the phone back to me, and he said, uh, I think they'll let you go home for the night now. And apparently, whatever he said, I don't know what it was, but it was, it was sufficient to, <laughs> for them to forgive me. And they made me sign a paper and write out a little note saying that I would never do that again. And then they took me back home, and so I was able to get out of there uh, free. But uh, it just made me very thankful that uh, I had gotten acquainted with a man in a proper spot to be able to be helpful. So we've often heard it said, uh, be kind to strangers. You never know, you may be entertaining angels. Well, I don't know if Mr. Lee was an angel, but he was a big help to me. And uh, so it just goes to show, be friendly and kind to everybody. You never know what uh, kind of benefit you uh, get from being kind.